Alright everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you are all having a fantastic day so far. So I know for a while now that uh, I haven't uploaded anything related to fishing. Alright, let me take that back up. Like, I haven't, I've uploaded stuff related to fishing, you know, talking about fishing stuff, but I haven't made a video with any fish being caught in them lately. So in today's video, I didn't go out and actually go fishing. Uh, I'm going to be telling you guys the top three best summer fishing lures. And I know, now I know summer's almost over, but it's always something you can have in your back pocket for next year. Or if you live somewhere where it's always hot like I do. I mean, Texas, where I live, it's if it's if it's not hot, it's cold. There's no in-between. But I'm going to tell you guys, there's three lures that I think work the best in the summertime. And they're not in any specific order. I mean, you can use them in different times of the day. And they work different, different, you know, situations, you know, the weather and stuff. But all three of these lures are really good and they all work during the summertime. All right, so what I'm going to do is every time I talk about a specific lure, I'm going to pull a clip of me catching a fish with that lure and from a previous video and you know put it on the screen while i'm still talking and stuff like that the reason for that is and hopefully everybody knows is the fact that my laptop is not letting me edit because it sucks but the first lure and the one that i personally like to use in the early morning and late afternoon during the summertime is a booyah frog now yes both booyah popping and pack crashing frogs do work in the situation because you use them in different Dude! Yes, both popping and pack catching frogs are going to be considering this uh, because you use them in different environments. What I mean by that, for example, is the pack crasher. I don't have any footage of me catching a fish like this, but um, if there's a, like a thin layer of grass that's like right on top of the water or like right under it, you can throw a pack crasher in that situation and also a lily pads, of course. But like, I have a, I, okay, there's a video of me here. Oh, the light just went out. Oh, the light's came back on. That's scary. Alright, so a popping frog is lure I'm gonna throw against like a weed line or something, some vegetation that's way too thick to throw a, to, to throw a pack crasher in, and also against, you know, like some open water, you know, there's an old dock or something, I might also throw a popping frog in those situations. Oh! I didn't have fish, dude. does work best in the early mornings. Dude. Can you just let me finish my video, please, Mother Nature? Please. Don't sing. That's not your thing. All right, so again, what I was saying was both of these lures work great, but uh, depending on your environment and you know, how, what your situation is, both of these lures will work in early morning or late evening during the summertime. All right, so the number two and the next one on the list is a chatterbait. The chatterbait I can throw white to start off with, and I always try to match the fluke on the back. I, I'll try to throw a paddle tail, paddle tail fluke junior, but if I don't, I throw the little, little tail. So if the white chatterbait isn't working, I usually try to switch to a bluegill color or something that's, you know, try to match the hatch in the pond and try to throw a lure that looks like, you know, some kind of bait fish that the bass like to feed on. Also, I guess I can add on to this. I usually try to throw a half ounce chatterbait or a quarter ounce, and she's usually with tends to work for me and also like to throw it on 15 pound braid all right so there's three ways i'm, I'm gonna normally throw a chatterbait the first one is against some kind of structure a rock a tree a dock so the second way is vertically throw it against you know a weed line a bank uh, some grass something on those lines some kind of vegetation and the third way and the final way is over top of some grass that you know submerged grass uh you know just try to you know get that big fish to come up out of that grass and eat that lure the two times that i normally throw a chatterbait during the summer is right after the top water bite is done in the morning and right before the top water bite starts again in the evening. See, but we always know if worse comes to worst. <clears throat> I got one. Oh, 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 oh my God, that's a nice fish, bro. That dude is fast. That's a toad, dude. That is an absolute slaunch. All right, so the third and final lure is a Texas rig. I know it's more of a rig than a lure, but the lure of choice is a red shad senko or a or a pumpkin seed senko. Those two colors, absolutely, I just love those two colors. Now, I know the color is your personal choice. You know, it's whatever you you know whatever colors you like to use. But those two colors work really well for me. So if you have never used those two colors, I recommend trying them out. So pretty much how I'll throw a Texas trick senko is a vertically against you know weeds, uh, up against some structure, in some structure, pretty much anywhere there could be a fish hiding. I 
So I know that was a real short description of the Texas tree, but it's such a simple and effective way to catch fish, and most people just don't take advantage of it during the summer. Now, the difference between the Texas rig and the frog and the chatterbait, do I throw a chatterbait in a certain time of day after the frog in a certain time of day? And if I don't throw them in that time frame, they probably aren't going to work for me. But the thing about the Texas rig is, though, I, I can I would throw the Texas rig any time of the day, you know, because usually when you throw that Texas rig, if you're working right, you get it in the right area, you're going to usually produce pretty decent fish. Please take that with a grain of salt, though, because where I live in the southern states, it gets really, really hot in the summer. And around 9 or 10 o'clock, the bite slows down, and it doesn't really start picking up again until the sun starts going down. So if you're catching fish in that time frame from like 9 to 6.30, you're, I don't, I don't know. So pretty much what I'm saying is those three lures work in that time frame of like 6.30 to 8-ish, 9, and they start working again at like 6.30, 6.45, to whenever you want to quit fishing. Now don't get me wrong though, these lures might not always work, but for me in the summertime, these lures always produce the most and biggest fish. Quick. I was just thinking, uh, the kind of line I throw these lures with is uh, I throw the chatterbait, I throw the light braid, uh, and then with the other two I throw heavy braid because usually I tend to throw those uh, those other two lures to where I'm the frog against structure or where a line could, you know, where a thin line could easily break. Alright, then before I sign off, if you haven't seen that video up there, click it. It's my previous video, so I have the like button. If you already have seen that video and you haven't seen that one down there, if I, it's some random one, I have no idea what it is, but go click it, slap the like button. And also, if you aren't already subscribed and you don't want to scroll down two centimeters, you can click that button right there and also subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.